Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Jets, and I'm here to talk about week 14 of the regular season where the Jets lose another heartbreaker 20 to 12 to the Buffalo Bills. And uh, come with me. Hey, look, we're on the floor again. I really hoped we wouldn't be back here, honestly, this season. I, I was hoping that all my videos would be standing, but, you know, here we are. What's funny is I actually started the channel uh, always in a chair. And I would only stand up in videos I was very, very upset about. And I want to say it was a mixture of it being a good luck charm in the Astro streams and the Rangers videos last year where my cat CJ, otherwise known as Vibe Cat, would uh, sit in my office chair when I would like walk up to go get something. And I didn't have the heart to move him because he was asleep when I came back. And then I started doing standing videos and I never went back. And now, juxtaposed to the standing videos, which were when I would get very, very upset or excited, and now are just the standard, uh, the sitting videos, which were the standard, are now when I am very, very, very sad. Jets lose a heartbreaker. This was eerily similar to last week. Eerily similar. And Jets are on the road against the toast of that conference, and you might say, what about the Eagles? And I would say, yeah, probably the Eagles are a better team than the Vikings, especially after the Vikings just lost to the Lions. Are you kidding me? Penny Sewell caught the game-winning catch on, like, a fourth and one. That was weird. That whole... The, the Lions are so weird. That's beside the point, right? The toast of their respective conference, and you go into their house, you hold their offense way in check. The defense did great again today. But the defense does really, really well the first half, allows virtually nothing. Early in the second half, they allow a score. The offense kind of starts willing themselves back into the game, and then the defense clamps down one more time to make sure the offense has every opportunity, but they can't do it. They can't execute, or this, that, or the other. Eerily similar, back-to-back -back weeks. And the, the optimist of that is, hey, you played two teams that could very well be the Super Bowl matchup. Like, if the Vikings and Bills ended up being the Super Bowl matchup, I don't think a lot of people would be like, wow, that's a weird one. It'd be like, yeah, those are two very, very good teams. And you held both of them to, like, 25 and 20 points in their house and were in it the entire way. You lost by a possession in both games. That's the optimist. But it's just... I can say the positives of games, right? The defense today was amazing. It was the same thing that it was last week. The defensive line put a lot of pressure on. Corners did a pretty good job. Sauce Gardner got tested once, and then Josh Allen said, I am not going to open that door again. And he never did. I don't think he... Did he target Sauce more than once? I think he had one target today on his receiver. Sauce was fantastic. Shocker, right? Shocker. Now, 16 for his lead, league leading. Uh, passes defensed. Amazing player. Right? The defense was good. The defense did everything it could. The offensive line was solid. The running game, led by Bam Knight, continues to be ridiculous. Uh, Bam Knight is going to make a lovely accent piece to Brees Hall next season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Michael Carter had the awful fumble. Receivers got open. Elijah Moore was open a lot. Denzel Mims was open quite a bit. Garrett Wilson opened a lot. Had like, I want to say like 80 yards, if I'm not mistaken, round there. Uh, broke today. The single season rookie record for reception or for receiving yards beating Keyshawn Johnson that's awesome Garrett Wilson man he's gonna be a stud in this league a star for this team great player there is a reality that we have known that I think we've known for the past like six or seven weeks and we didn't really want to admit it when Wilson was still starting because we had hope that he could figure it out and we didn't obviously admit it the first week of Mike White or last week with Mike White. And this week, some people still aren't. Some people are saying that, yada, yada, I'll get to that in a moment. The reality of this all is the Jets are a quarterback away from being a debatably Super Bowl contending team. The defense can hang with them. We have seen that. The defense can straight up hang with these Super Bowl contending teams. The offense, for the most part, can. The receivers can find ways to get open against those really good teams. The running backs can find ways to get yards. The offensive line can find a way to protect for a bit. We are a quarterback away from being great. And it's hard. Uh, a lot of people were upset today that Zach Wilson was not the backup. And when Mike White started battling his injuries, a lot of people said, Ha! This is the reason. How could Zach White not be the backup? Now we have to resort to Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco was in for like three plays and was awful on all of them. It was a run play... Uh, a reception or a throw that sailed a mile over the receiver's head, and then the fumble. 
Like, Joe Flacco was really, really... He was as bad as he could possibly be. Uh, and Mike White, look, he battled through it. That was awful conditions, and you can't ignore that, right? A lot of times... A lot of people, when Zach Wilson had his awful game against the Patriots, and he was like, well, you got to look at the weather. Everyone was like, Mac Jones did very well. Today, you can look at the weather and say, yeah, no one was being able to do anything. Josh Allen was unimpressive in the air. They couldn't do that much. It was very hard to throw. It was like 15-mile-an-hour winds, 30-some degrees, like 35 with sleet. Winter mix is what they call it on the broadcast, which is to say it's not snow and it's not rain. It's its awful step cousin miserable conditions and he did everything he could uh probably a rib injury if i had to guess i'm not a doctor i'm an idiot that's sitting on his floor on an astros colored blanket complaining about a football team because i let men in spandex decide whether my weekends are happy or sad right so i'm an idiot don't take anything i say looked like ribs to me it would not surprise me if it came out that he had a broken rib right he got drilled a couple of times right in the rib area he battled through it. it. was so clear that he was injured. So clear that he was just fighting beyond fight for anything. And a lot of people looked at that and said, man, that might, want him, that might have won him a starting job next week. And I, I, or ne- next season. And look, I think that you should definitely admire what he did today. He battled. It's so clear that he wanted to win it for this team, for these guys, for this staff. He loves everyone in the building, and they love him back. And a lot of times when a guy is playing injured, some people will say, that's selfish of him. That is selfish of that player. Because he's saying that himself injured is better than the backup at 100%. That selfish play. And it very clearly, it very clearly wasn't today, guys. Uh, Joe Flacco was in there for three plays, and they were all horrific. So it's very clear to me that an injured Mike White still gave us a better chance to win than a healthy Joe Flacco, at least today. And... I don't think that he's going to be the starting quarterback next year, right? But ultimately, everyone... I I saw people getting upset about this game and yelling about Mike White, or not Mike White, Zach Wilson not being active and like, ah, this is why. And I'm like, guys, the reality of this is the starting quarterback for 2023 is not in the room right now. I don't think it's Mike White. I know it isn't Joe Flacco, and I'm 99% positive it isn't Zach Wilson. I would say that there is like a 98% chance the starting quarterback next season is not in this room. And you got three doors that you get to go down. You can draft one because that's gone so damn fantastic in the past. You can sign one or you can go trade for one. I don't know what the option is. But I think you can look at the team right now and say that the quarterback for next season is not currently in the room. And the negative of that is that you have to go find your quarterback, and that's tough. The positive of that, when you find him, you don't have to go find a stud. You don't have to go find an MVP candidate. You have to go find someone that can manage a game. You need to go find a guy that's like Alex Smith, like Taylor Heineke, Ryan Tannehill, that level, middle shelf. You don't have to go get one of the like high shelf vodkas. You can go middle of the row and be good because this defense is amazing. And while the offense I don't think is ever going to be like that top five elite gunslinging offense like a Bills or a Dolphins or a Chiefs or what have you, I think it could still be a very, very good offense. I think it could still be top 10 easily, you know? Kind of, honestly, with the way our running back room is built, I could see him being like a better version of the 19-niners, which is, you know, sort of a comparison that we make constantly for obvious reasons. We basically are them. We stole everything they have. So we, we cleaned their cupboards to make our team, which is fine. I think that's a, that's a pretty all right team to emulate. But ultimately, I think one thing this does confirm, though, for me, is that Douglas and Sala should both be back. I, I don't think Sala has ever really had his head on the chopping block. And I think the only reason we were going to fire him at the season's end was if you just want to be like, no, I'm done bringing in one or the other. I'm firing you both and bringing in a head coach and a general manager simultaneously. But Salah should definitely come back, and I would say Douglas should come back. They have built a team that is still in the dogfight of a playoff spot with a like 38-year-old quarterback who just, I like Flacco. He had a solid career. I think he was a fun guy. He seems like a funny person. Seems like a charismatic guy, but just doesn't have it anymore. Zach Wilson, who might genuinely be a bottom two quarterback in the league and Mike white, who this today was battling injuries. And I mean, battling injuries and they still 
all said and done, almost made the playoffs. Honestly, you could not even look at, just look at everything else. Like, the only thing you can do to make a case against Douglas is if you look at the overall team record and the quarterback play. But if you look at everything else and see what he's built, the fortitude that he has brought into this team. The fact that we're down to, like, our fifth running back is our starter now, and he's still putting up, like, 70 yards a game. Insane, right? Douglas is a good GM. He hasn't hit on the quarterback yet. And that is a big thing. And if he doesn't hit on the quarterback next year, then he has got to go. But I would give him one last gasp, and I would bring him back for next season. But we're talking about next season. And it is a positive that it's now December before we are talking about the next season. But this season is still not over. There is still an opportunity that you can make the playoffs. You very well could. And I would love that. I really would. God, I want the playoffs. The positive is you get a couple of games that you should be able to win. Next week you play the Lions. But, you know, the Lions just beat the Vikings, so who the hell knows what's going to happen there. And then you play the Jags on Thursday Night Football. So there's a possibility that you get a couple of wins. You get back to, like, that would put you at, what, 7 and 6? Or 9 and 6. And then this is still a team that could very, very well make the playoffs. It's still very much in the cards. And I really hope they do. God, I hope they do. I want this drought to end. I want to watch a Jets playoff game this year. I so badly want to do that. So I'll be here next week uh, after the Lions game. That's at 1 o'clock. It's back in MetLife. That's all I have for right now. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Jets.